اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم پروجیکشن آف سٹریٹ لائنز لائنز آر جومیٹریکل انٹیٹیز ہیون ٹو اینڈ پوائنٹس پوسیبل پوزیشن آف الائن ویڈ رسپیکٹ ٹو دو ٹو پرنسپل پلانز آف پروجیکشن دیڈ ایز With respect to the horizontal plan, the line can have these positions parallel to the horizontal plan, perpendicular to the horizontal plan, inclined to the horizontal plan. With respect to the vertical plan, the line can have these positions parallel to the vertical plan, perpendicular to the vertical plan, and inclined to the vertical plane. Now, as you can see, the line AB is parallel to the horizontal plane because both of its ends are equidistant from the horizontal plane that is having same distance from the horizontal plane. So this line is parallel to the horizontal plane. Because if you extend the line up to the infinity, it will never intersect the horizontal plane. So it means the line is parallel to the horizontal plane. perpendicular to the horizontal plane. You can see this line now is making an angle of 90 degree with the horizontal plane. So this line is perpendicular to the horizontal plane. Now if the line is perpendicular to the horizontal plane, so it must be parallel to the vertical plane. Because the two planes are orthogonal, are in other words perpendicular to each other. So, if the line becomes parallel, uh, becomes perpendicular to one of the planes, it must also be parallel to the other plane. In this case, the line is perpendicular to the horizontal plane, so it must be parallel to the vertical plane. Now this line AB is now inclined to the horizontal plane because its ends distances from the horizontal plane are different and A is having this much distance and end B is having some greater distance than ends A distance. So it means that the line is making an angle theta with the horizontal plane. So if you extend this line or lengthen this line, so it will intersect the horizontal plane. Means that the line is not parallel and the line is inclined to the horizontal plane. Now similar cases exist with the vertical plane, the line is now parallel to the vertical plane because both ends distances are the same or this line is equidistance. The end point or the ends of this line is, are equidistance from the vertical plane, so this line is parallel to the vertical plane. The line can also be perpendicular to the vertical plane. As you can see, this line AB is now making an angle of 90 degree with the vertical plane, so it becomes perpendicular to the vertical plane. Now, it, if it 
is perpendicular to the vertical plane, then it must also be parallel to the horizontal plane. Line inclined to the vertical plane. Now look at the end's distances from the vertical plane. And A is having this much distance from the vertical plane or in front of the vertical plane. And, and B has some greater distance as compared to the ends A from the vertical plane. So the line is inclined to the vertical plane. And the inclination with the vertical plane width will be shown with symbol phi. The line can also be parallel to both the plans. In this case, as and A distance and and B distance from the horizontal plan are same. So the line is parallel to the horizontal plan. Now look at the ends distances from the vertical plan. As they are also equal, so the line is also parallel to the vertical plane. So this line is parallel to both the planes. Perpendicular to one plane must be parallel to other plane. Perpendicular to HP must be parallel to BP. As I have told you before, that the two planes of projections are orthogonal or perpendicular to each other. So anything parallel to one of the plan must be perpendicular to other or vice versa. Uh, in case of per if the line is perpendicular, then it must be parallel to the other. But if the line is parallel to one, then it may or may not be perpendicular to the other as we will see later. So if the line is perpendicular, it must be parallel to the other plan. But if the line is parallel to one plan, then it may or may not be perpendicular to the other plan. So in this case, line parallel to the horizontal plan sorry, a line perpendicular to the vertical plane, so it must be parallel to the horizontal plane, as we can see from its ends distances. Inclined to one plane and parallel to the other. So the line can be parallel to one plane, and at the same time, it will be parallel or inclined to the other plan. For example, look at the end distances of line AB from the vertical plan as they are the same, as they are same, so the line becomes parallel to the vertical plan. But look at the end distances from the horizontal plan. And A has this much distance and ends B has some other distance are greater distance than and a distance so the line is inclined to the horizontal so this line is parallel to the vertical plane but inclined to the horizontal plane now another case now the line is you can see parallel to the horizontal plane you can see or judge it from its ends distances and A has this much distance, and, and B has the same distance from the horizontal plan. So the line is parallel to the horizontal plan. But look at the end distances from the vertical plan. As they are different, so the line is actually inclined to the vertical plan. And the inclination with the vertical plan will be shown with the angle phi. Now the line can also be inclined to both the plans. 
you can see the ends distances of the land from horizontal plan as they are not the same so it is inclined to the horizontal plan and look at the ends distances from the vertical plan as they are also not the same so the line becomes inclined to the vertical plan as well or uh, you can say that the line is inclined to both the plans now i will have to show you that uh, For example, you can see a plan. You can make this plan from a cardboard. First of all, cut rectangular pieces and then cut it from the center and insert it into one another in order to make a plan. Now, a line parallel to the horizontal plan. So a line will be parallel to the horizontal plan if the line ends are lying in the horizontal plan like this. If the line is lying with both of its ends in the horizontal plan, so the line will be parallel to the horizontal plan, no matter if the line is placed like this or like this or like this. But as far as both of its ends are lying in the horizontal plan, so the line will be parallel to the horizontal plan. Or if both of its ends are equidistant, for example, and this end, and this end, if they are both equidistant from the horizontal plan, so still the line will be parallel to the horizontal plan. Now, if one of its end is lying in the horizontal plan and the other is away from the horizontal plan, so the line becomes inclined to the horizontal plan. Or if one end is having some distance and the other end is having another distance from the horizontal plan, so the line becomes inclined to the horizontal plan. Similar cases exist with the vertical plan. If the line is lying in the vertical plan, both of its ends, the line will be parallel to the vertical plan. Or if both of its ends are away from the vertical plan but having equidistance, still the line will be parallel to the vertical plan. Inclined, if one of its ends is lying in the vertical plan and the other end is away from the vertical plan, so the line will be inclined to the vertical plan. Now, this line is now inclined only to the horizontal plan and is parallel to the vertical plan. But if I move this end to this position, so this line becomes inclined to both the plan because this end, this end is lying in both the plans and this end is away from both the plans so the line becomes inclined to both the plans so you can have these cases as has been discussed with respect to the line Position of a straight line with respect to the two plans. Parallel to both the plans, as we have seen, perpendicular to one plan must be parallel to the other. Perpendicular to the HP must be parallel to the VP. Perpendicular to VP must be parallel to HP. Inclined to one plan and parallel to the other. Inclined to the horizontal plan and parallel to the vertical plan. Inclined to the vertical plan and parallel to the horizontal plan inclined to both the plans. Projection rules of parallelism. If a straight line is parallel to a principal plan, 
its projection on the same principal plane must be equal to true length. Whereas its projection on the other principal plane must be parallel to XY line. Now, if the line is parallel to a horizontal plane, so its projection that is the top view, because always the top view is formed on the horizontal plane. Its projection that is the top view must show the true length of the line if the line is parallel to horizontal. Now in this case, as we can see from its end distances that it is parallel to the horizontal plane. So its projection looking for its top view, the projection of end A will be projected to this position on the horizontal plane. And for the top view of end B, it will be projected on the horizontal plane at this position. When you join these two points, so you will get the line, the projection of this line. And that projection must show the true length. True length means length equal to the length of the actual line. So, The projection must show the true length and its projection on the other plane, that is the vertical plane, must be parallel to the XY reference. On the vertical plane, its front view will be formed. Looking at the line from this direction, in case of orthographic projection, points are projected. In case of a line, we have two end points. So those two end points would require two projector to project its front view as well as, to, as its top view. So its front view of end A will be projected to this position. The front view of end B will be projected to this position. And when you join, the two points, so you will get the true length of the line or the projection of the line. In this case, the projection is showing the true length because the line is also parallel to the VP. Line is parallel to the HP, therefore its top view is true length and front view is parallel to XY line. You can see that in case of If we consider first this case, line parallel to HP. So on the HP, it must show the true length that is in the top view. It must show the true length. And you can see that its front view, that is A dash, B dash, will be parallel to the XY reference line. You can see that. The ends distances in the front view are equal distance from the XY reference line. So the front view is parallel to the XY reference line. So line is parallel to the HP. Its top view is true length and front view parallel to XY. Line is parallel to VP. Therefore, its front view is true length and top view parallel to XY. Now, if we consider first, the line to be parallel to the vertical plane. So you can see that on the vertical plane, as the line is equidistant from the vertical plane, so this line AB is parallel to the vertical plane. Now, its projection on the vertical plane, that is the front view, is, must show the true length. And its top view, that is the projection on the other plane, must be parallel to XY. You can see the end distances from the XY in case of the top view. So equidistance from the XY reference line, so 
this statement becomes true. Lan is parallel to the vertical plane. Therefore, its front view is true length and top view parallel to XY. Lan is parallel to Lan is parallel to HP. Therefore, its top view is true length and front view parallel to XY. Now you can see in this case that this line AB is parallel to HB because its end distances from horizontal planes are equal. So it is parallel to HB. So on the HB, the projection must show the true length. On the HB, always the top view is formed. So for the top view, you will look at it from above to project point A and also to project point B here onto the horizontal plane. The projector, in case of this orthographic projection, must be parallel to each other. This and this must be parallel to each other. And also these projectors must be perpendicular to the plane of projection. For the top view, the plane of projection would be the horizontal plane. And for the front view, the plane of projection would be the vertical plane. So you can see that its projection, one projection of the end A would be on this position and and B. And when you join these two hands, so you will get a line. That line will be the projection of the line AB. And that must also be of length equal to the length of the line itself. Or in other words, true length. But as the line is inclined to the vertical plane, you can see the end's distances and A distance from the vertical plane and and B distance from the vertical plane as they are not equal. So the line is actually inclined to the vertical plane. So on the vertical plane, its projection will not be of true length because for its projection, you will have to project the front view of end A and also the front view of end B. These projectors must be parallel to each other and must be perpendicular to this plan of projection. In this case, the plan of projection is the vertical plan. So you can see that end A will be projected to this position on the vertical plane and and b will be projected to this position on the vertical plane when you join these two points so you will get a line as projection of the line ab now you can see that the projection on the vertical plane or the front view is shorter as compared to the length of the line so means that showing a smaller length as compared to the true length of the line to on the plane to which the line is inclined so line is parallel to the horizontal plane therefore its top view is true length this and front view is parallel to x y reference now this is the front view which is parallel to the XY reference line. Look at the ends A distance from the XY reference line and look at the ends B distance of the front view from the XY reference line and both are the same. So the front view is parallel to the XY reference line. Line is parallel to the HP. Therefore, top view is true length and front view parallel to <coughs> Now again, 
this line which is perpendicular to the vertical plane and parallel to the horizontal plane so on the horizontal plane it stop you will be the same as because this and a would be projected to this position on the horizontal plane and and b would be projected to this position on the horizontal plane when you join these two so you will get this line which will be exactly equal to the length of the line itself means that the true length so it stop you is of true length because the line is parallel to the horizontal and the line is perpendicular so looking at it from this side in order to draw its projection as and b is in alignment with and a so only one projector would be needed to project both of these points or ends and they will be projected to this position on the vertical plane and you can see that still this front view is parallel to the xy reference line line is parallel to the vertical plane therefore its front view is true length and top view parallel to xy length now if the line becomes inclined to the horizontal plane and parallel to the vertical plane then what would happen as the line is parallel to the vertical plane you can see the ends distances from the vertical plane and a distance and and b distance as they are equal so the line is parallel to the vertical plane now for its front view you will have to project and b and and a through projectors and a would be projected to this position and and b would be projected to this position and when you join these two points so you will get a line as its projection now this projection is of the same length as the length of the line itself or in other word we got the true length in the front view because the line is parallel to the vertical plane but the line is inclined to the horizontal plane as you can see the ends distances and a distance above the horizontal plane and ends b distance above the horizontal plane as they are not equal so the line is inclined to the horizontal plane now we can we can get its top view by looking at and a from above as well as at point b from above and projecting it onto the horizontal plane they will be projected to this position and and b would be projected to this position and when you join you will get the line or the projection of line a in the top view so as the top view is shorter than the length of the line or is showing shorter length as compared to the true length but still this top view is parallel to the xy reference line I look at the ends a distance from the xy reference line in the top view and look at the ends b distance from the xy reference line in the top view they are the same so the top view is parallel to the xy reference line front view is true length and top view is parallel to xy reference line. line is parallel to the vertical plane therefore its front view is true length as the line is parallel to the vertical plane and perpendicular to the horizontal plane so the front view would show its true length for the front view projecting ends a 
and and b so and b would be projected to this position and and a. when you join it so you will get a line as its projection and the length of this projection line will be exactly equal to the true length of the line and it stop you as the as both of the ends are in alignment and b is in exact alignment with and a so we will require only one projector to project its star view and you can see that its star view would be a will be a point and both of its ends would merge and you will denote it a b and still it is parallel to the x y reference line so the top view will be parallel to that one if the front view is true length then the top view is parallel to x y reference line we have seen this if the top view is true length then the front view is parallel to the x y line if the top view is parallel to the x y line then the front view is true length if the front view is parallel to the x y line then the top view is true length if one view is true length then the other must be parallel to x y reference line if one view is parallel to the x y reference line the other must be the true length now this line ab its projections are being shown line ab its end a is 40 mm above the horizontal plane so let me draw edge view of the plan the plans and let me show it and a is 40 mm above the horizontal plane so because the line consists of two ends and we will treat each end as a point so that will that will make our drawing very easier as we will project only that point so for example and a is a separate point which is 40 mm above the hp and 50 mm in front of the pp so this is a and a line is parallel to the vp and inclined to the hp now line is parallel to the vp and inclined to the hp so this must be the case i'll have to show it with the camera now this is the position of the line the line is the end a this is end a and a of the line is above the hp and in front of the vp and you can see that the line is parallel to the vp if the line is lying in the vp or it's both of its end equal distance from the vp so that line will be parallel to vp so the line is lying like this it is inclined to the hp and parallel to the vp so now its front view and a as and a was 40 mm above the hp so its front view would come 40 mm above the x y reference line and 50 mm in front of the vp so you already know that if a point is in front of the vp it will its top view would be rotated below the x y reference line 
it is 50 millimeter in front of the VP, so its top view will go 50 millimeter below the XY reference length. The front view must be in alignment with the top view. So here you have drawn a point for the front view, and this line is for the alignment. You must align it, and you have also drawn a point for its top. View. Now, as the line length is not given to us, but as the line is inclined to the HP, so the other end must be at some greater distance above the HP. So let's assume that the another end is, let's say, 40 millimeter, uh, 60 millimeter above the HP. So it's, and B would be located 50 millimeter above the HP. And similarly, the top view of this line must be in alignment with the front view of this end B. And as the line is inclined to one of the plan, so and parallel to the other plan, as it is parallel to the vertical plan, so its projection on the vertical plan, that is A dash B dash, is of true length. and its projection on another plan to which it is inclined, that is the HP, will be shorter because the top view is formed at the HP. So you can see that the top view is shorter than the true length and must also be parallel to the XY reference line. So this is the line which is parallel to the VP and inclined to the HP. Now another line. You can see that the front view, that is A dash and B dash. One end of the front view, that is A dash, is above the XY reference line. So, the quadrant in which the front view comes above the XY reference line is the second quadrant. So as the front view of ends A is in the, is above the XY reference line, so this end of the line must lie in the second quadrant. And also, the second end or end B in the front view is coming below the XY reference line. So, in case of the fourth angle projection, only the, and in case of the third angle projection, the front view can come or will come below the XY reference. So, this end B will either be in the fourth quadrant or in the third quadrant. But look at the top view. As the top view of end B is coming above the XY reference line, so it must be in the third quadrant because in the third quadrant, the top view of a point comes above XY reference line. In the, in the fourth quadrant, the top view will also be below the XY reference line. So the second or the end B is in the third quadrant. And also the line is parallel to the VP as the front view is of true length. VP and inclined to the HP. So 
this line is basically lying in the second quadrant one of its end is lying in the second quadrant and the other end is lying in the third quadrant and the line is parallel to the vp and inclined to the hp let me show it with the help of the camera so you can see this is the first quadrant and this is the second quadrant. So the line is actually piercing the boundary of the second quadrant and the third quadrant like this. One of the end and A is in the second quadrant and and B is in the third quadrant. And both its ends, that is, both of its ends, that is end B, this end, and this end are equidistant from the vertical plane. The end A distance from the vertical plane, and also the end B distance from the vertical plane are equal. That is why the line is parallel to the vertical plane, but you can see that the line is inclined to the horizontal plane one of its end or the mid or the mid is lying in the horizontal plane and the other end that is the end a or the end b is away from the horizontal plane so it is inclined to the horizontal plane and is parallel to the vertical plane and this line is contained by both these second and the third quadrant. I hope you have understood this lecture. That's end for today. Thank you.